Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and bringing you different kinds of stuff. Um, if you like my channel, subscribe, share and um, put the thumbs up. Um, today I wanted to talk about this face app. You know, there's a lot of hype about it. The media are coming down with words like Russian and, you know, security issues and all that kind of stuff. I mean, really and truly, what is the difference? FaceApp is owned apparently by a Russian company and they can go into your camera roll and they can take your photographs and they can do whatever they want, allegedly. Um, I think, you know, we can either look as FaceApp as a bad thing or a good thing because it's all artificial intelligence. And what supposed to happen is they're supposed to be able to make you look really really old it can change your gender and I was wondering if it could even change your race now why I think um, people in the media and people at the top are worried about it is that if they're trawling Facebook profiles which is what these these um, apps are being used for how are they going to know who's who it's going to cause a lot of confusion, isn't it? Because they're, they're looking, I mean, that's the way they get a lot of um, foreigners and they're able to look at their, their so facial, social network profiles, Facebook and all of that stuff. And they rely on the photographs to give them an accurate description of the person on the profile. Now, if people are using this face app and distorting their image, changing their image completely, it's going to throw them right off. And they're not going to like that. They're not going to like that. Can you imagine if you could put up a profile and have it give you the image you want? Like I said, it can change your gender. It can change your the color of your hair. And it's, a, it's supposed to look really, really effective. So it's no wonder they're all up in arms and using emotive words to describe it. And they're talking about hackers are going to get into your um, camera roll and use all your photographs. I mean, to be honest, we've reached a point where we know we're being monitored. We know that Big Brother is watching us. We don't have privacy anyway. So what difference does it make? Are we supposed to select who we give privacy to? We don't even have a choice. When the government invades our our phones and they invade our social networks and they invade our homes and they invade us in so many different ways, they invade our privacy. So a third party invades our privacy. What difference does it make? We don't know who's who's looking at our photographs now. So if we decide to have some fun with our photographs and do what we want with it, what difference does it make? I mean, I I don't know. I don't know what difference it makes. You know, I've given up with all this privacy issue. Now, when I see the cookies, I'm just clicking okay if I want some information I click okay on the cookies I can't be asked because they're going to get onto your computer if whether you like it or not and if they're interested in you nothing you do no cookies or anything you stop no privacy um, settings is going to make a difference so therefore I'm not even bothered by this face app apparently it's one of the quickest it's a free app, but it's what it's one of the fastest selling. Well, even not free. Well, I shouldn't say sell, but it's the fastest downloads. Anyway, let me read it because I can tell already I'm getting myself in a tizzy. So let's see what we have here. I put is it a force for good or is it a force for evil? Um, face app puts a filter over your face to augment it to look like an old person. It uses artificial intelligence to edit a picture in your gallery and transforms it. Experts are concerned that it can access and store images from your camera roll. But people are giving FaceApp access. But people are giving FaceApp access to use, modify, adapt, and publish any image of you that you offer up in exchange for artificial intelligence. The terms of service says. 
Security concerns when using FaceApp. A new social media craze that augments your face to make it look like an old person. But I hear it can also make you look a lot younger as well. Um, developed by a team of Russian developers in 2017. I don't know why only now it's come into focus. The app which puts a filter over your face has gone viral in the last few days. Or maybe that's why it's just gone viral. The free service uses artificial intelligence to edit a picture in your phone gallery and transforms the image into someone double or triple your age. Face app is a photomorphic app that uses what it calls artificial intelligence and neural face transformations to make alterations to faces. The app can use photos from your library or can snap a photo within the app. It can also change your hair colour, allow you, allow you to see what you look like with a beard, swap genders and even look younger. That's why I said, if it can do all of that, I'm sure it can change your race as well. And, you know, they've even got apps similar to that anyway. You know, they've got these beauty apps. You can make your face look more narrower. You can do all kinds of stuff with these apps. So I don't see what the big deal is. But experts are concerned of a more questionable clause in the app, which can access, store and use images from your camera roll without your permission. Face app is currently one of the most downloaded apps for both iOS and Android, as face app challenge posts have taken over social media. But with the surge in popularity, some have raised questions about how secure our user data is and what it does with users' photos. The terms and conditions of the app essentially gives FaceApp access to see, modify, adapt and publish any image that you offer up. Same thing. James Watley, a strategist from Digitas UK, posted an excerpt on his Twitter page. It reads, You grant FaceApp a perpetual, irrevocable, royalty-free license to use, adapt publish, distribute your user content in all media formats when you post or otherwise share. What difference does it make? They do it on Facebook. It's the same thing. I don't know why they're getting themselves a little tizzy about it. Facebook is allowed to use your name, your username or any likeness provided in any media format without compensation and you won't have any ability to take it down or complain about it. Yeah, right. Hype, hype, hype. I don't even believe it, to be honest. I just think they don't like the idea of people using it because they realise that people could actually change their identity with this. They rely on photographs in order to create profiles. They can track you and know what you're doing. With this app, is actually saying, OK, I can be someone else. I can be somebody 10 years older, 30 years older or younger. So people are going to have a field day with this app. No wonder it's downloaded so many times. Twitter users have also pointed to the app's Russian origin. Face app is owned by a company, Wireless App, which is based in St. Petersburg. Ariel Hostad, security expert from VPN Mentor Blog and ex Gmail marketing manager for Google, told Mail Online that he warned people about apps like these before. I mean, okay, so they throw in Russians. Are we supposed to associate Russians, Russians with spies? It's, ter it's stereotyping. It's stereotyping. We're all supposed to get all worried about it. You might as well say everything you buy is Chinese. What difference does it make? If it's providing you with a service and it's a service you want, what difference does it make? I think what happens is, is when they can't control something, that's when they get concerned. And I think with this face app, because it's being downloaded and it's being downloaded in the millions, they're a bit concerned for bloody hell what are people are doing with all these photographs. So it could be true that they can access your camera roll. I mean, when you um, when you upload photos anyway to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, it does ask if you if it can have access to your photos. So what's the difference? It has access to your camera roll. 
And in anything to do with photographs, it's going to have access to your camera roll. So I don't see why this is any different. Unless they can tell me what the dangers are, I don't see any different from you using FaceApp to using beauty, whatever these beauty apps are, or uploading to Facebook or uploading to any of these other sites. I don't, unless somebody has come up, and from what I'm reading, I haven't read anything that's telling me about other dangers other than you can look three years older. You'd have to ask yourself, why would anybody want to look older unless they are doing something mischievous? I mean, most people want to look younger. So their concern has to be to do with people who are not totally kosher and who might be using this app. I don't think the general, the general John Joe, who's using it for fun, is going to... Um, is going to be a, a, a concern to them. But I would imagine that if they're trying to track down people and this app is going around, they won't know if they're coming or going. And also, I was just thinking with the biometrics, because they use some of these photographs for their biometric um, information, they won't be able to do that with this app. So they're going to be getting some wrong information, and that's probably what the concern is. Anyway, it says hackers many many times are able to record the websites that people visit and the activities they perform in those websites, but they don't always know who are those users, he said. The thing is, with hackers, like anything, you have to protect your software, you have to protect your PC. That's why we have virus management systems on our phones and on our PCs, and you just have to be careful. You know, hackers, you know, they've, they've hacked into governments, so they can hack anywhere they want. You know, you know, by not using this app, it's not going to make any difference. I don't know if it makes it easier, but who knows? I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a, what do you call it, an expert in all of this stuff. Imagine how they use the phone's camera to secretly record a young gay person that visits gay sites but didn't yet go public with that and they connect his face with the website he's using. I mean, the examples they use. We're supposed to go, oh my God. Your face is now a form of copy copyright where you need to be really careful who you give a permission to access your biometric data. This has got to be a joke. Everybody's got access to our biometric data. Google, Amazon, the police, home office. What difference does it make? Another person intervening, getting our biometric data. We're, you know, we've lost control anyway. So no, we can't turn back the hands of time. They've opened up a can of worms. And things like this are going to happen. When you start giving people ideas about the capabilities of all this equipment or, and technology, you're going to have people trying to get one step ahead all the time. And this is a result of it, one of these apps. If you start using that willy-nilly in the future when we are using our face to access things like money and credit cards, then what we've done is we've handed the keys to the users. Well, to others. Well, I ain't using my face to use no credit card and I'm not using my face to no bank account. That's a definite. So I met them tande. And we have to be careful who we give facial recognition to. Really, really careful. That's one thing I would say. But apart from that, I thought I'd share it since it's in the media and it's causing such a lot of concern. And I value your comments, as usual. I don't always get to put my two pence worth in, but I do read them occasionally. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.